Each and every project presents a series of unique complexities. There are recurring errors that developers make as builders when designing a new project, and that it is important to take into account in order for this to be a success. Here, we present 10 of the most frequent errors in experience in residential development. Greetings to all the builders out there. My name is Jesus Arroyo and this is Planos Constructivos where we talk about construction, architecture and everything related to it. And one of those things is, you know, the frequent errors that we have when we project a residential development. And number one is that we believe the concept of the project can overcome the market limitations. Without a doubt, the first to fall in love with your project is the builder pretty much, the architect or whatever who is building it. And the blind infatuation causes that there are always incremental improvements to the specifications of the project. Quickly, the price goes out of the window projected by the demand study, and the response from a developer is usually the same. The concept is so good that the client will pay more for it. Although it hurts to say it, it is not like that. The market price limits are a great precipices to raise the price above these limits, and it is to go a space where the market completely disappears. Another one is when the privilege, you know, privilege the sales volume over sales speed. And generally, developers and builders seek to maximize the total income of this project, especially when their fees are functional of an administrative costs of the project, which are a percent of sales. These incentives cause the developer to be more concerned with exploding the land as much as possible rather than finding the, project, the product that generates the most value to the market. It is a recurrent case of developers that the little equity in the project, you know, they pretty much tend to focus more on building a big, big, big building or, you know, a lot of homes, uh, many, you know, uh, rooms or anything like that to, to make a big volume instead of focusing on the speed of sales you know that you don't have to build a big big development pretty much you focus more on selling fast I know you're not gonna sell very very fast but it is better if you do you know your pro a small project or the same project but you pretty much uh, divide it into different phases and then you start with phase one phase two and that's it so you can you know make more your speed yeah your selling process more faster and more uh, better actually so the other one is do not adjust prices properly when designing price list we usually work with one or two variables as a criteria for price determination in case of vertical housing tend to be height and orientation the problem products for the architect rational are not those that the market values more in the most sophisticated projects we have seen dynamic pricing models where each sale causes changes in the price list with model that integrates architecture availables with the demand and updates in the real time to reach the performance goal so it is important that you check out not only um, let's say oh this is this goes in the facade so it has a higher price but also check out for little features that you could add to your project or what, whatever you're selling in order to make more prices available on the market and, and about your project pretty much. Another one is make product decisions based on architectural criteria and the design process always appears we architects with a recommendation motivated by technical and physical criteria that goes against the elements of market de desirability. For example, I generated the modulation to accommodate the parking lot or I created these terraces to help the facade. Just like these two, we've heard too many. And there is always a reason for architecture to be built on market desires. Making the right decision usually translates into more work for the architect, a situation that is sometimes difficult to face. So pretty much we as architects, we have to be, you know, humble and realize that we don't know everything and we'll well, at the end of the video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Number five, a force and early exit to sales. 
the variable time always goes against performance. A longer term decreases the rates of return and therefore there is always pressure from the developer to start at speed. Sometimes it is so much the rush to go out of sales that the interest in product planning and especially in market reading is reduced. Less time does not always represent more money. So pretty much you gotta watch out for what the market wants and also to do a real planning about your project. It is very important. I've seen it with many, many, many people who are building as an, as for investment and they want to start right now and pretty much that makes them lose money more than pretty much earn it. So you gotta watch out for, for your hurry to, to start a project. The sixth one is that we do not um, plan to anticipate their, let's say the rat tail. A good friend says that the rat tail are those last units that are never sold, especially when it's apartments or housing. They are usually the least desirable and with the highest prices. The incredible thing is that these final units practically have implicit the utilities of the project. Reason why not to place them means that the project loses financially. An experienced developer reserves discounts for these final units and places them with their trusted investors, but at the end of the project, not at the beginning, which translates into more dramatic closures and with better financial results. Another one is that you do not validate the project before the market in the traditional development process. A market study is developed, uh, you know, pretty much the ideally of supply and demand, and it, is, and it results and is used by the architectural team to design the product. When the architectural team finishes the design, it is sent directly to sales. Another one is simplifying the products to achieve construction efficiencies. You know, as product planning pro progresses, decisions are usually made based on their ease of construction. There are, well, there is always pressure to reduce the number of options to the customer or adjust the product criteria to models that provide constructive efficiency in a developer with a technical personality. The constructive pro pressure and sub modifying the product deeply and even causing it to fall into the market preferences so you gotta watch out for for those you know just simplifications before it hurts really hurts bad the project or whatever thing you are planning to develop in order to be sold another one is a stock work before before having real sales when macroeconomics reserves or the friends and family network allow it they can trigger very positive and artificial commercial results. These results are not based on the real commercial operation and therefore do not represent a commercial consolidation of the project initiating the work by meeting the financial goals. That does not justify the market value and can generate problems when the project faces the, in the real market. And that's very common, you know, we usually tend to go to our friends and family and ask them, oh, what do you think about this project? Would you buy it? And they say, oh, yeah, it looks awesome, you know, but they, they like you. They're not the real market. You don't know. You, you, you got to face the harsh reality of the real market and see if what we're planning to, to build will work. Another one is that do not accept mistakes and take losses. In every project, there are risks motivated by external factors that are not considered in the planning stage. When one or those factors affects the outcome of the project, it is difficult for the developer to accept their losses. Motivated by the desire to maintain surplus value, the issue of taking losses is usually avoided and a true developer accepts the mistakes he makes and confronts them with the market and we do not intend with this article or what this video to avoid mistakes. We strongly believe that the resilience is one of the most important values of real estate development work. The strength of the developer is the future that lies in having the ability to get up early from whatever mistakes we face. Also we gotta watch out you know for um, a lot of this is generated a large part by our arrogance as builders, uh, you know, architects, engineers, contractors, and the original real estate development work is deeply intertwined with the architecture of profession. In most cases, we require a design that allows us to imagine in a practical way what could have become a new piece of the city. In this way, a business and potential profits are generated for a group of investors. However, 
the two professions, you know, the business profession or whatever, the, the entrepreneur, I would say, and architecture is based pretty much on creativity. On the other hand, real estate development is based on being, you know, pretty much one more line of the business where are the driving variable as is investment returns and the ability to multiply the financial resources. In an ideal world, the two disciplines would coexist and benefit but the reality is that there are always distortions in that coexistence. So why are we wrong? Well, the number one is that planning is not done based on what the user wants, but on what we think is needed. You know, we as architects, we tend to, to think that we are really good at everything. And everything begins when you have, you know, uh, a land, a land property that you want to detonate in a business opportunity. And the second is tremend and is tremendously important is that we do not review the project in an integral way, but simply as spaces rather than lifestyles for a person where they will have experiences and therefore not carry out the previous studies necessary to frame the business premises of the project, so, so, such as market studies, legal and legal permits, financial planning, among others, you know. And it's something that we like to see not only the fact of cost per square meter, but the ability to create a greater investment and satisfies end users, not only based on a room, but an extension of their life and their moments and whatever they want to live their lives. The second one is that we feel that as architects, you know, I just said it, <laughs> we know everything and do not consult well. It is important that as architects we know our limitations in the technical part and seek to know the true needs of the user. As I said, it is not cost per square meter, so we have to see comparisons between other existing projects. That is what you want the people in their spaces and houses, that is what makes them happy and integrated into architectural party. So that is not only a room and three years, you know, it's also um, you gotta be checked out for you know other disciplines, you know, uh, marketers, uh, lawyers, and and other people to see what they want. Especially if you're you know building a medical medical center, well, you gotta talk with doctors. I also say that you know, especially here in Mexico, a lot of doctors they have a lot of money and pretty much they want to invest their money on something. So they tend to think that because they do well and they can you know pretty much fix people problems and everything like that that they know everything and we've got to be humble again I, I i have to say it again that you gotta be humble and realize that you don't know everything unless even though you're very good at what you do you need to talk and collaborate with other people another one is the sum of you know little marginal decisions undoubtedly the most common is that the large decisions are not those that affect the process but a sum of all small marginal decisions as the designer progresses, the architecture usually presents an optional upgrade which is sold to the developer since at that moment the conversation does not include the market. If an architect has a good persuasive abilities, pretty much we can convince of this change to, to all the investors or, or on our clients about what we want to do, you know, and those little decisions. And when this scenario is repeated due to the multiple revision that the project has, one can imagine the amount of magical modification that the design can have and therefore its consequences. You know, those a little and little and little, they accumulate and they change the project totally, even though we don't think it will do. Another one is, you know, and pretty much the last one, an architect says, it's very good for selling. <laughs> you know, there are architects who have very charismatic personalities. This allows them to easily convince work desk because they govern the conversation. The only way to prevent, you know, these personalities from affecting the project is to ensure that the ideation processes are worked and collaboratively. And that is the products are validated before the market. You know, also you gotta check on the market. You gotta collaborate with your business partners and whatever who's in the in the project you know working with you lawyers marketers and whatever to make it work at the end of the day so th this is it thank you very much don't forget to like and subscribe my name is jesus arroyo and if you're willing and interested in building here in mexico or a project uh, don't forget to check on the description and i'll give you all the can contact details